Well, Llancarvan in the Vale of Glamorgan has been a place of Christian worship for 1,500 years. I teach church history and I've known this church for a long time. I've been here so many times and not realised what was under the lime wash on the walls. In 2007, the church's architect invited me to visit St Caddock's and give him advice about the implications of a thin red line at high level. Otherwise, you could see nothing of the wall paintings. The detailed investigation began with the removal of the layers of overlying lime wash. And early on, we discovered the princess's head and also that of the king. And these were the indicators that this, this was going to be St. George and the Dragon. All medieval churches were covered with wall paintings like these. They were there to educate and also to the greater glory of God. And as far as we know, in most cases, they were commissioned and paid for by the members of the congregation. We've actually got in the wall paintings here the heraldry of some of the leading local inhabitants who would have contributed towards this. The uncovering process is crucial to the conservation of these paintings, and it is excruciatingly slow. In many areas, we're down to less than a square inch per hour. The dismantling of the scaffolding today reveals the latest stage of the project. What is so exciting about what we've got here? First of all, we've got the whole story of St George, the best of its kind that we have in Britain. You've got George attacking the dragon, but you've also got the princess who was going to be sacrificed to the dragon. You've got her parents peeping out over the battlements in terror. And you've got the Virgin Mary blessing St. George in his endeavours. And then you've got this incredibly vivid portrayal of the seven deadly sins. On the one hand, you have St. George. This is what you should be doing. On the other hand, you have the seven deadly sins. This is what not to do. People being encouraged by devils and being sucked down into these hell mouths. And then... Possibly a bit later, somebody else paints this incredibly vivid and gruesome painting of a, a young man, fashionably dressed young man, being dragged away into, round the window embrasure into the graveyard by this hideous death figure. It's not death as a skeleton, it's death as a rotting corpse with worms and toads wrapped in his shroud. These paintings are so vivid they are so exuberant. They flow outside the frame. They would have been wonderful for the people who could have seen them. We think the paintings are from the late 15th century, from about 1480, 1490, partly by the costumes of the people in the St George story. Everybody has their own favourite bit of the paintings, I think. And my bit, certainly, is the horse's head, because the day that was revealed, suddenly the paintings became a part of my life, I guess. And each time thereafter I've looked at the painting and looked at the horse's head, he starts to uh, speak to me. One of the amazing things for us has been to see how the parish and the village has gone through a journey, as well as the paintings themselves. It's as if the uncovering of the paintings is now becoming itself part of the story of the village. Where we are now is very much work in progress. There's still a huge amount more to do, and there are new, probably very intriguing discoveries still to be made. <laughs>